In the world of Power Macintosh, there is no debate more divisive than this. Which vintage version of Mac OS X is best for your old Mac? On one side, we've got the tyrannical tiger fanatics, and on the other side, those loony leopard folks. Well, I'm here to settle the debate once and for all, and I've brought out a couple of my trusty PowerBook G4s, including my G4 upgraded PowerBook Pismo, to definitively say that the best version of Mac OS for PowerPC is... 10.12 Sierra? And why am I eating this delightful sorbet? The answers to all this and more coming up, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy vaguely non sequitur introductions to interesting projects for classic computers, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. There are a ton of people creating amazing new retro Macintosh projects, and I've got plenty of similarly silly introductions in the works. So today we're going to take a quick look at a really interesting project to bring an improved version of Mac OS X to PowerPC Max. It was created by cleverly remixing the final PowerPC release of OS X, 10.5 Leopard, with unreleased PowerPC Snow Leopard code and throwing in a healthy mix of quirks and features. And it's called Sorbet Leopard. I first saw the thread about its development on the Mac Rumors forums over the summer where user Z970 posted about its genesis. And I would completely forgotten about it until last month when I was a guest on the excellent Fork Bomb podcast, where Euro and Chris told me that they actually had a big hand in testing the release. I'll link to that episode in the description below. It was a really fun chat. But let's take a quick step back and talk about OS X on G4 Max. Historically, if you wanted to start a horrific flame war with PowerPC Mac users, all you had to do was take a firm stance on either side of which is better, Tiger versus Leopard, because on the Tiger side, users swear by the speed and lightweight OS, along with classic compatibility. But on the Leopard side, users are sure that the greater compatibility with modern software and internet applications is worth the speed and classic trade-offs. Z970 wrote about many of these gripes in his initial post as the driving force behind the creation of this new, old version of Mac OS X. A version that aims to bring the speed and stability of 10.4 Tiger, along with the compatibility of 10.5 Leopard, along with a smattering of unreleased code from the cancelled PowerPC Snow Leopard, and a host of other optimizations, and a few fun quirks as well. Originally, I thought the obvious comparison to do would be Sorbet versus Original Leopard. But then I realized it actually makes more sense to compare Sorbet against Tiger, because that's really the promise of Sorbet, a better Leopard that runs as fast as Tiger. So I've got two machines set up, each with partitions of Sorbet and Tiger. This Titanium PowerBook is an 867 MHz G4 with one gig of RAM and a 32 megabyte ATI video card. The Pismo has had its G3 processor replaced with a 500 megahertz G4. It also has one gig of RAM, but its ATI Rage video card has a paltry eight megabytes of VRAM. Now Apple's official minimum requirements for 10.5 Leopard are an 867 megahertz G4, which the tie book hits that minimum perfectly, but the Pismo falls well under it. And let me tell you, I've hacked Leopard onto the Pismo, and it was sluggish. Window draws were painful just dragging a window around. It really needs Tiger to run effectively, even with the G4. You know what isn't sluggish, though? The sponsor of today's video, Atlas VPN, who also happens to be running an incredible deal right now, just $1.39 a month for three years when you use the link in my description. With blazing speeds and protection for an unlimited number of devices on a single subscription, Atlas VPN is an incredible choice to protect yourself online, block ads, and stop malware in its filthy little malware tracks. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a huge proponent of using a VPN service. And not just for the privacy aspect. Did you know that websites actually give different deals to different people based on geographic location? Use Atlas VPN to change your location and get fair treatment from these horrible automated marketing algorithms. It's easily the best VPN deal on the market right now too. 
Atlas VPN is currently running that deal for a three-year subscription coming in at just $1.39 per month, and they even back that with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is limited, though, so make sure you use the link in my description below and snag that sweet deal. So I figured the best place to start is by checking out Sorbet on the Thai book, which again, at 867 megahertz, is just barely able to officially run 10.5 Leopard. Installing Sorbet is super easy. It doesn't actually have an installer. Instead, what you have to do is use Disk Utility to restore a DMG file to a partition of at least 20 gigabytes. And that does take quite a while, so I've already gone ahead and done a fresh install. And then we can just select Sorbet as our startup disk and restart. And after a surprisingly quick startup time, we're booted into the Sorbet Leopard desktop. And the eagle eyed among you might notice a few interesting differences from a normal 10.5 Leopard install. But let's talk a little bit about what makes this so special. Sorbet Leopard was built off of 10.5.8 as a base, and then they incorporated numerous concepts and components from the unreleased 10.6 PowerPC beta, which we've covered on this channel before, and we've called it the impossible cat. And I think it's kind of cute that they numbered this 10.5.9 as if it's the last missing update to 10.5. But they've done a lot of optimizations under the hood. It comes with QuickTime 7.7 .7 Pro, WebKit 604.5.6 with mail integration, and Bash 4.3.30. They've also included a lot of cool stuff by default in the install. One really interesting inclusion is the PPC App Store, which is a front end hub to all sorts of PPC applications that you can find and download. And uh, it's made to look like the App Store did. And some of it probably won't work on your machine like Spotify. I think this old app is recently no longer supported, but it's really cool to see all this stuff in one place. Yeah, so it's just downloaded Spotify to the desktop in a DMG. I'm curious to see if this still works. Okay, as I thought, Spotify does not work anymore, but that's okay. It is incredibly cool to have this app store. Now, one of my favorite things about Sorbet Leopard is they included a whole bunch of interesting utility scripts under applications, including scripts to theme the interface and reduce the overhead. For example, in your dock, you can change it from a 2D to a 3D dock and back again. I used to do this all the time on my actual Leopard installs using the command line, so it's pretty handy to have this. and. Uh, this definitely helps speed up the responsiveness of the dock. But really cool, under themes, we have our Mountain Lion and High Sierra themes using Leopard Rebirth. And this is incredibly cool to theme your install to look like a modern version of Mac OS X. The only caveat here is that, well, it's a one-way street. Once you run this theme, there is no going back. But this is probably one of my favorite things to do on Leopard, and it just looks so incredibly cool. All right, install succeeded, so when we restart, we should have a very modern looking Mac OS. And there we go, modern looking Mac OS on a titanium PowerBook G4. How freaking cool is that? You could totally put a fake notch on this thing and pretend it's an M1 MacBook Pro. But in all seriousness, I know that you could totally do this yourself on a standard Leopard install using that theming software, but it's just so cool to be able to do it in one click on a pre-installed piece of software and additionally have the benefits of this super optimized version of Mac OS 10.5. Of course, we just need to turn on dock magnification because that's my favorite thing. And yeah, that's pretty smooth. Let's push this illusion even further. Sorbet Leopard helpfully includes some modern macOS wallpapers. <laughs> yeah, and check it out. Now you could really convince your friends that this is an M1 MacBook Pro. 
But yeah, this is pretty fast and responsive, much more so than I remember Leopard being on this machine. Again, being at the base minimum specification to run Leopard per Apple. Okay, now what I'd like to do is run Geekbench on both Tiger and the Sorbet Partition to see if there's much of a difference with the overhead of the operating system running. But I don't think we should do it on this 867 megahertz G4. Instead, let's really work for those benchmarks and use the Pismo. Now I have Sorbet Leopard installed on here, exactly the same as I have it on the tie book. And uh, just the fact that it's usable is pretty incredible. I mean, it's definitely not fast, but I tell you, this feels way faster than Leopard does on here. Leopard is absolutely a chore to use. The big test being moving a window around. And yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but honestly, that is way smoother than regular Leopard. But let's take the first set of benchmarks on the Tiger partition, and then we'll compare it to the Sorbet partition, which will give us an idea of what the difference is between the overheads of these two operating systems. Okay, so I've run Geekbench 2.2, which is the last version that works under both Tiger and Leopard. And honestly, these results are pretty incredible. Under Tiger, we scored a 211, and under Sorbet Leopard, we scored 205, which is amazing. That's almost a negligible difference. And uh, that leads me to believe that the processor overhead is more or less the same between the two operating systems. It also got me thinking that maybe this isn't the best benchmark to really see the difference between these two since it's the same underlying system. So I've also decided to run Xbench. So this is Xbench 1.3. And what's good here is that I can turn off all of these other tests and just run a user interface test which will literally bring up user interface elements in Mac OS and test the responsiveness and the frame rate and stuff. So I've done that under both Tiger and Sorbet. And again, I'm amazed. Tiger scored 4.68 and Leopard Sorbet scored 3.44, which is definitely slower than Tiger, but not as much as I would expect. So I'm really interested to see now what would regular Leopard score on all of these tests? So I've got my multi-boot Firewire SSD with a Leopard partition on it. Let's boot into regular Leopard and see how it compares. Okay, we are booted into Leopard 10.5.4, the regular Leopard, and oh man, is it ever sluggish. I mean, just look at this dock. <laughs> that is... Honestly, that's worse than I remember it. And these window draws, that is some serious jank. So I'm gonna put up side by side, regular leopard and sorbet leopard and let you see the difference. All right, I've rerun our benchmarks on leopard and uh, you're gonna be quite surprised. Up here, I have our results previously for Sorbet Leopard at 205 and Tiger at 211. But the Geekbench score for regular Leopard on this 500 megahertz PowerBook Pismo is 105. <laughs> Just look at that. Now, I know some of that is going to be due to running off of a FireWire drive, but look at the processor performance difference. On Sorbet, we've got integer performance of 252, and on Leopard, we've got 130. So I think the processor has to do a lot more to keep Leopard running than it does to keep Sorbet Leopard running. But it is the Xbench interface benchmarks that really tell a complete story. We've got our previous two benchmarks up here, Tiger scoring 4.68, Leopard Sorbet scoring 3.44, a noticeable decrease, but not too bad. Regular Leopard though, 2.45. That is abysmal. And that is such an incredible difference between stock Leopard and this super optimized Sorbet Leopard. 
Okay, so that'll do it for this look at the really interesting Sorbet Leopard project. And I'm really curious to know what you all think. Let me know in the comments below, are you gonna try out Sorbet Leopard on your own G4 machines? Or are you perfectly content running Tiger or Leopard, whichever one you've been running for years? I'll of course put links to everything down in the description so you can go download and run Sorbet Leopard for yourself. But I think I'm gonna continue running Sorbet Leopard on these two machines at least because it is just a ton of fun and it looks beautiful. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more anachronistic Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Chris Allegretta, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods, Justin D. Morgan, and Nick Hamsey, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.